Hey guys, you can unmute yourself. Sumi is coming. Still have a few more, waiting for a few more people. Hopefully we'll finish this chapter. Let's see. PowerPoint is not open, so I'll just open the PowerPoint. How's everyone? Good? We're almost done. We're almost done with the book. Finally. Ah. Hopefully, we'll start the conclusion. So, Ms. here. So, we can start. So, which is the next book, Amit? Ah, the book, uh, the Invisibility Book. <laughs> the Invisible Duo Book. Huh? <laughs> Just like we were in the beginning of the session. We, we will dematerialize <laughs> like ectoplasm. <laughs> All right, shall we start with a prayer? Let's close our eyes. Inhale and exhale, relax the body. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua, Lord Maha Guruji Nailing. To all the great ones, the beings of knowledge, light and wisdom, to the great teachers and masters of theosophy, the angels of communication, our respective Wi-Fi's and internet connections, to the great teachers of education, to the Lord Christ, to our soul and divine self. We humbly invoke for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your light, for your love, for your tremendous patience upon all of us as we, are, as we gather here today to have a greater, clearer, deeper understanding of your priceless teachings. Help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it to become dev better divine instruments in your care. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste, guys. Welcome everybody to the last part of the second last chapter Really making it obvious it's almost <laughs> coming to an end <laughs> over and over again. All right. So um, let's go to the evolution of ectoplasm. Yeah. So in my book, it's almost the third last chapter. Chapter. Sorry, third last page of the chapter. So it goes on to say that uh, the evolution of ectoplasm from the body of the medium is accompanied uh, is accompanied by strong muscular movement which means the muscles in her body or his body is uh, affected or there is some kind of physical uh, movement within them now this normally happens from the waist down or, for, or from the hip down for the particular medium and so they continue to say that it basically moves over fleshy parts of the body <laughs> right so <laughs> hopefully you don't have a nice big paunch otherwise it's going to go there and and kind of chill away but anyway just joking so basically it's it's the fleshy part uh, i presume it means muscular as well parts of the body because uh, everything is fleshy right <laughs> yeah. there's no part where we don't have the flesh, flesh yes. <laughs> right so. so um so it starts from the waist going all the way down and uh it it starts to reduce in size it almost feels like the flesh has caved in so if you met people who've suddenly lost a lot of weight, you feel like, you know, someone just sucked them out. And, and uh, so something similar is what happens to the lower part of their body is what I understood from the waist down. Yeah. Now, uh, Mr. Crawford says uh, he has convinced that in the, in the production of these uh, seance in the room, the phenomena, there are at least two sub substances that are employed. So he says the first is a component 
forming the basic part of the psychic structure, which is invisible, impalatable, and uh, generally outside the range of the physical things altogether. So one is this component that he feels that there is something definitely there, uh, a kind of a structure that exists. And secondly, he says um, to this uh, structure that we're talking about, there is this whitish transparent kind of uh, nebulous substance that also goes. So there is a structure and the substance that goes with it. And so he says this is mixed with uh, in order to, to enable uh, two things, that is to act on the physical mat matter. And he considers it uh, in all probability identical with the material that is normally used for materialization purposes. Uh, so whatever is used in that, he feels that's the same matter or substance uh, that is used in this, uh, in this phenomena of the ectoplasm coming out of the medium's body. Yeah. You want to add anything here? Oh, what is the principle behind... Uh, do you remember that uh, lady in this case? You know, you've met people, they very emotional or something like that. There's not something... And they, they look... They're, they're, they look like they've been sucked dry or something like that. Something's wrong. They, they look sunken and, and generally, and generally they have, um, what is the principle behind cutting the cords from the feet in that? Uh, um, well, uh, according to Master, Marilak. Master Marilak, she says that oh, when you have, um, you have cords in different parts and she says, in, in the case of body sculpting, Master Chua actually tells us to start with cords from the lower part of the body and then we move upwards. And so the order of that is from the feet, then moving to the perineum, the basic, the sex chakra and going upwards. Are you live? No, we're not live. Because I went away. Thank you. Thanks. They missed one paragraph. Not a very important paragraph, I hope. Yeah, so, um, so basically what we're talking about is uh, these energy cords, she says, if you pull it out from that part, it helps the cords and the rest of the parts of the body to actually reduce from some, for some strange reason. And in scanning, we've all noticed that. So once you start pulling it out from that bottom portion, you'll notice that if you have cords in other parts, say, for example, the throat or your heart or your solar plexus, interestingly, it actually starts to reduce. So somewhere... Um, if you look at it, if that is kind of yanked out, and I, I think uh, what Amit is trying to get is, remember we were talking about earlier, the ectoplasm, those rods come out of, go down the legs. Almost always, almost always the from feet, the waist. Correct? Feet, yeah. And so that's why... And uh, always those, starting from the solar plexus. Yes, and so with Most reference so. to uh, changing the form of the physical body, the, which is also uh, the basis of uh, pranic facial and, uh, and body sculpting, is got to do with the etheric body. So if you're pulling all that out and then you reshape it, it, it really helps in healing that person. So not that you've been doing, you know, seances or lifting tables, but that seems to somehow indicate that the lower part of the body is uh, connected with a lot of cords. No, because yeah. if you look at it, where, where, where I mean, I, I, I've been going through a lot of, uh, been helping people with their CPH uh, certification. And I've seen more than one a uh, case where they've cut cords from the soul minor chakra and the person's uh, musculoskeletal system uh, becomes better. Uh, overall health uh, becomes better. But my question was, where are these cords going to? I mean, like, they have to go somewhere, right? They're going into the earth. That's good. <laughs> That's good, right? So, I mean, who are they connecting to down there? So uh, that they have issues. I have a feeling since it starts on the solar plexus, extends like this exactly the way they've spoken about that this has got to do something about uh, maybe we can call it ectoplasm. Um, I remember there was that um, lady from South America. I remember she was in a Manila senior retreat. She had gained so much weight over uh, over the year, and she was very she's still very and she was very good looking types. And then uh, Master Marilog saw her and then did the core thing from the feet, and she lost all the weight overnight, like 50% of the weight. Mm -hmm. It was I your roommate. Know. She was my roommate? The one, the South American. Really? The, her, right? No, no, I don't know about it. Long back, 2005. 
2006. That's when the court from the Lord. Anyway, I'll check. It's long time ago. I, I don't know. Yeah, this is something that Master Marilak talks about uh, with her experience with Master Chua, and and she did give us. Anyone else? In the meantime, the healers, while Sumi's talking, Depression. if you if you felt uh, the cords in the feet, you cut and they become uh, better. You can do, Master Marilak. What happened? You, I, I'm just. You oh, I don't talk. remember. You said this is all Master Marilak. Uh, she does this. Uh, no, thing. I know that she just talks about it in the class. So that's why. Okay. Works wonders. All types of healings. Perineum chakra. Perineum, uh, perineum also. Perineum is just a faucet. So perineum is congested. That's true. Um, but uh, the soul minor, it's very, very... Uh, yeah, the breast is normal. That's very normal because people look at it, right? So they cord the nipple minor. Um, that's <laughs> very, very common. Uh, but um, what, what we're trying to... What I'm trying to do is make it a little bit more practical. To make it, you know, a little bit more understandable, practical. And uh, the only thing I've seen in healing, per se, uh, is these cords coming out of the feet. And I've been reading this now for how many days? Like days, you know, a week. And over and over again, they keep saying from the trunk, goes down, goes down, coming out of the feet, coming out of the feet, you know, anchoring here and there. So I think, uh, I think it has to do with that. That's, that's all. You can continue. That. Think about it. So if you haven't done body sculpting is another course you should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> at least to find out about these rods that come out of the feet. Don't ask that in a class, yeah? I'm just like speculating here because we're trying to just connect some dots and see. All right, so, so let's move on. So after this, uh, we are actually going uh, across to this German investigator, uh, basically the Baron, Baron von Schre... Uh, Schre how do you say it? Where? Schrenk. 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 Nutzen. Nutzing? Shrink Nutzing. Nutzing. Okay, see, I would have said Nutzing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm really bad with names from other countries. I always prefer to ask them rather than... They might say, say shrunk. shrunk. Okay, so let me go on. So now, uh, he has been uh, mentioned earlier as well. And so we're talking about some of the work that he's done. And he, he has been one of those mm -hmm. persons who's taken a lot of photographs. I guess being a baron, he probably had a lot more funds uh, to allow him to take so many photographs. 200. Today you have 2,000 on your phone, but in those days, in the early 1900s, I think 200 photographs is a lot. Of <laughs> yeah, it was expensive. I, I don't think it was that easy. And plus, you've got to remember, there's this whole thing about red light and, and the person being in dim light inside. So the kind of photography, I'm sure, it wasn't as sophisticated as it is today. And so keeping that in mind, I'm sure... That by itself was quite interesting for the photographer to take. So this has got to do with all the works uh, that is put by this Baron in his book, Phenomena of Materialization. Yes. So it starts by saying uh, many phenomena of materialization are described with that scrupulous and minute attention to detail as characteristic of most Germans. And so going back to the Baron and translated by E.E. E. Fournier? Fournier. 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 Uh, and then it doesn't matter for me the Alba. Alba? Alba. Alba. Okay, Alba. Okay. In addition to Alba. elaborate uh, throw I'm sure he's very descriptive. Uh, they're not just uh, people, the Germans are not just you know very on time and getting things done, but they're also people who go into a lot of details and, and very accurate about those. And so his elaborate description based on the kind of person he is, and a large number of seances and phenomena that are uh, put into that book. There are also uh, some 200 photographs of materialization form or apparitions of many kinds, ranging from threads of masses of ectoplasm to fully formed faces. So remember, we were talking about those little strands that were coming out. So he's got pictures of that going all the way to literally with those I mean, I'm not, not really tissue, but remember the material we were talking about, the stockings and everything else. They were able to actually get the impression of faces uh, with the eyes and the nose protruding, all that. So it, I'm sure at that point, and I'm sure even for us today, if it was happening in front of us, it would be still quite amazing. The main conclusion may be uh, epitomized as follows. These are taken largely for convenience from a lecture on supernormal uh, physiology and, and the phenomenon of ideoplastics, yes, by Gustav Gelle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, a, uh, a Paris uh, psychologist and physician. 
which was again printed at the end of uh, the Baron, uh, Baron's book. So let's look at what we're talking about here. From the body of the medium, there emanates a, su a substance which is at first uh, is amphorous. Is that correct? Or Where? Amorphous. Amorphous or uh, polymorphous. Poly polymorphous, yeah. So do you know what that means? Of course. Yeah. Could you tell them about it? They know what it means. It's in English. Do you know what it means? Of course. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Could you explain? Which one? Both. I don't know what the meaning of those two words are. Yes. Amorphous is without a say? form and polymorphous is without shape or form. Both. Um, both amorphous. And, and the other one is with form. Yeah. All right, so I don't know what that really means because it's Without saying basically structure. one doesn't have form and the other one has form. So I'm not sure because they couldn't see it visibly, but I thought- I think it's basically, uh, you know, like your old TVs, <laughs> when you used to switch it on before the picture didn't come instantly, it would slowly uh, appear <laughs> from an amorphous state and then it would keep changing its state like- Till it began. So I think maybe it's just, you know, the formation of the- uh, so uh, you're appearance. saying the energy or whatever this it this takes thing time emanates. it's basically materializing so it takes time you know it starts forming it, actually that's how clairvoyance works uh, to be honest uh, you know clairvoyance you can't just a lot of the time for beginners you can't just switch it on and off uh, when you switch it on it takes time for the it's like the old computer you remember the old monitor before you used to press the button and then although the power is on the screen is still coming and it's coming and it's coming and so it takes time so i think that's what it means okay. clairvoyance works like that too okay so i think what what i would visualize is for, there's the person uh, from the aura or, or the energy body emanates this the substance that just comes out maybe like mist and then that kind of settles and goes into you know it settles and then goes and makes it a, a cord because then they say it looks like a ductile you know like a, uh, like uh, and then they go on to, uh, they, they mentioned that it appears as ductile dough, right? And then a true uh, protoplasmic mass, a kind of shaking jelly. So it's, it's starting to take form. So uh, it, it starts to look like lumps, then thin threads, cords, narrow, rigid rays, a broadband, uh, a membrane, a fabric woven material, or a net with fingers and uh, rucks. Yes, so it looks like, like uh, Amit mentioned, from that, for me, the state is more like mist, which is coming together and then starts to look a little bit more solidified, as, as solid as probably what you would call jelly or a, a lump that is there. And uh, then it kind of maybe elongates. I'm not sure if that's what they mean, because it suddenly becomes a cord, it becomes a ray, right? And then it becomes threads. So obviously a thread is not jelly, because thread is like stretched, if you look at rays, they're also long, uh, they're not uh, a lump. And so these thin threads and, and cords and rays start to produce, then depending, remember we said there's a thickness. It could be uh, just like half an inch or it can go all the way up to seven inches. So then that band of thread, as it starts to increase, could, could become wider. It could be like a membrane. Right, so very, very thin membrane. Remember, we spoke about film earlier, so it could be like a very thin film, a uh, fabric that's wo uh, woven material or a net, the net like the stockings of a woman, and uh, with fringes and rucks. And what is rucks? No idea, yeah, no, idea. I know what rusk is, yeah, but rucks, okay. So, so coming back to the thread, we're going to talk a little bit more about the thread. So, the thread of fiber like nature of the substance has frequently been observed. So remember, even earlier, they did mention, and again, with Barron's uh, experiments and the work that he's done, the research that he's done, again, they're coming back to the thread. So a cord, if you look at it, even if you talk about a normal cord, a rope, it's basically a lot of long strands of thread, right? Which is then woven together to make it a thicker and thicker cord. So probably even the cords that we talk about in pranic healing is basically little, little strands. And those strands are kind of uh, put together. And then it looks like a, like a thick rope that connects uh, one ectoplasm, a wire of what I would call in pranic healing, wire blo one blo bioplasmic body to another bioplasmic body. 
right? It may be white, they say, it may be black, it may be gray, it may be a combination of this, but most of the time it appears to be white and, and because of that, it's also considered quite luminous, yes? Now, usually it's odorless, there's no such smell, but if there is an odor, he says that he's not too sure how to describe it. Probably the kind of smell is something that maybe the language, uh, either in French or whatever, it's not possible for uh, them to be able to. Uh, well, can relate to anything. Yes, so some, you know, you you've got to say that the, it smells like uh, smoke or it smells like something. But if it doesn't exist, then it's difficult because there's no word to to describe something that doesn't exist. So that's why he says they're out of words there. Uh, there seems no doubt that it is subject to the influence of gravity, which means this cord ultimately, if it has to be let loose, it would probably fall downwards. That's what I would understand by gravity. To the touch, it may be moist. So now we were looking at what it looked like. Uh, now coming to the feeling. So if you touch it, it's either going to feel moist or cold. We mentioned this even earlier, viscous and sticky. More rarely, uh, very rarely rather, it would be dry and hard. So you've got to remember it, it, it was considered even in the earlier part of the chapter as semi-liquid. So I think that's where moist would come. Then uh, cold also came from that point. And then it says when expanded, it is soft and slightly elastic. So all of them talk about it being actually elastic. And that is something to remember. And uh, it says when formed as cause, it is hard, knotty and fibrous. It may feel also like spider web passing over your hand i don't know if you want to feel something like that but yes if you if you who open, feels a, well, how can you, you know, describe for example, that like, when you go into a place that hasn't been open uh, for a very long time and you don't realize and you put your hand in and then you're like ah spider webs it doesn't feel very nice but you do you know you're, you're touching something and that doesn't feel very comfortable so it might feel like that because you've got to remember these cords are connecting to something Right, and so the energy or the ectoplasm on that gets connected to your your interesting cord, and uh, therefore the quality of that cord starts to change. And so coming back, it might continue to have things like um, the the thread becoming rigid on and elastic as well. But coming back to the next part, it is mobile. Uh, it, it basically means it's movable. It's mobile as in it can move, and this movement looks like it's creeping around. And it looks like a reptile, like a snake, snake moving, right? Because it, it, it doesn't just stay stiff like a rod, it actually moves. Uh, so it has a reptilian motion, though sometimes it moves suddenly and quickly, right? And uh, it also talks about uh, a drought. Drought, yeah. What is a drought may set, in, set it in motion? Yeah, what does that mean? The cool so air. Oh, like a draft? Something like that. Okay, so they say unless that they mean the other word would be bottoms up. Yeah, so something that. around <laughs> that disturbs it. Uh, that that, for example, if there's there's like wind coming, it seems to already affect uh, this particular uh, movement of the cord. Next, remember we mentioned you can't really bring something solid, a material, uh, a material, and put it between. Uh, the cord from the medium going wherever it is. And so here it goes back in this experiment as well. Touching it produces, if you do touch this, this cord, it, it uh, causes pain in the, in the medium. Because remember, all this is coming out of her or him. And so if you touch, if there's a painful reaction, the reaction is felt by, by the medium. It is extremely sensitive and appears to dis disappear, <coughs> appears and disappears with uh, lightning rapidity. Right, so it's suddenly there and then it can completely be gone, vanished. It is usually sensitive to light. Yes, interestingly, they say it's sensitive to light. And the next sentence they say, though in some cases, sometimes the phenomenon may withstand full daylight. So in broad daylight, it, it is still uh, visible or it was still uh, experienced by people. Maybe they couldn't see it, but they could feel it. Flashlight photographs of it can be taken though the flash acts like a sudden blow on the medium. So again, remember any kind of disturbance with light, uh, with something that is physical, uh, even like a pin, could actually affect uh, the movement of this energy towards the patient. Uh, not patient, patient actually. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of a pranic healer, sorry. Uh, towards the uh, object that they want to move or work with. 
Now, if you're a healer and if you've been doing pranic healing regularly and you're treating a patient, if someone actually walks between you and your patient, if it has ever happened to you, you will notice you do feel uncomfortable or you're like, what happens suddenly? Because that link suddenly gets disconnected. And after, of course, a couple of seconds, because your intent is to heal your patient, it actually does come back. But initially, it, you, know, you really do feel disconnected suddenly, especially when you're in the act of uh, continuing to do the healing. But obviously not in distant healing. Yeah. So I'm going to just talk about one more paragraph and then hand it over to... That's surprising. Um, it doesn't happen in distant healing. It happens in... In manual physical, healing. Yeah, physical, physical healing. healing. So during the production of the phenomenon, uh, the cabinet containing the medium. So I'm really thinking of the medium being placed in a cupboard because for me, a cabinet is a cupboard. So I'm thinking of this wooden cupboard and this medium is placed there because it's dark and uh, is usually in darkness. <laughs> uh, but the curtains outside of the cupboard, right? They are drawn aside, the, outs the outside of the cabinet and red light is used and sometimes even white light up to a uh, hundred candle powers. Oh my yeah. God! Seriously. That's a different way of of looking at before light. Before electricity. <laughs> yeah, before electricity, it's like a hundred candle light. That's as I bright know, yeah, as the room bright. was. That's and so, bright. if you go to a room with a thousand candle lights, I think you would be you would be marveling at at the <laughs> at the light in that room. They said it sounds. It looks like the sun is out. No wonder it's so old. We're really like trying to make out like eighteen hundred stuff. I wonder what the light in this room really <laughs> looks like for them. If they ever came here, go ahead, Amit. Uh, I've, I've stopped with all this the is information. You know, um, look, the fact that there's uh, white, black, and gray uh, shows the. I would presume that's the quality of energy. Okay. Look, don't take all of this literally. I mean, for me, it's also like the quality of contamination that's going on. No, that's what I mean by quality of energy. Out. If it's good quality energy, it's luminous. If it's not so good quality energy, like there's emotions involved, other things, it's not so luminous. It's gray. Black, I don't know what that would be. That's just no color. There's no such thing as black. That would be a very contaminated lot of... Um, yeah, lot very of, dark very, energy. Yeah, very uh, heavy energy. Uh, that means there's not that much fresh prana at all. Okay, so... Look... If somebody were to analyze the spiritual cord and like really zoom into it, you know, the Antakarna, you could probably describe it like this, you know, it's strandy and it feels like this and there's discomfort if you pass your hand through, uh, you know. There are so many colors. There are so many colors. Uh, you know, anything you really scrutinize, you can really, really uh, make it sound. It's just a cord. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I feel, right? But of, obviously, in those days, this is um, fairly, uh, fairly interesting. Advanced. So, fairly advanced. So you know, they, and remember, uh, they're German, so they love to go into details. Yeah, but if I was carrying a spiritual cord, you put your hand, remember when you put your hand like this, if you ask most basic instructors, when you do that, most people don't like it. They can sense when you do it. The, the person who is sitting down knows because you're shoving your hand in the, <laughs> in the, in the, in the spiritual antenna. So you can really feel uh, a little discomfort. Even people who have no idea, you know, they're just starting out a uh, basic class, right? Uh, so, so that is, um, you know, I could describe it really fluidic and it can expand and it can contract and it can become dense, it become rigid and, uh, you know, the downpour and it particulates down into the eyeballs and goes down into the heart and the breast and into the intestines and comes out of the uh, perineum <laughs> and comes into the legs and into the earth where it branches into ectoplasmic spider threads and... Just to give you an idea, just to, just to give you an idea, okay? Just Friendly to give you an idea, because many of you are getting, I think many of you are getting confused because you're getting, uh, you know, overwhelmed with the description. But if you describe, uh, uh, you know, the Antagonist Spiritual Core, it's, it's similar, okay? So let's just continue. Yeah, Susan, I hope oh. when you pull out all the cords from the low part of the body and the body lost weight, it's proportionate to the upper part. <laughs> I'm just teasing Susan. Susan, I know, can take my job. For a guy, it's okay, right? Then you become B-shaped. <laughs> Uh, but it does happen. Actually, it's not just like uh, Johnny Bravo. There's a cartoon Johnny Bravo. Yeah, I've heard of Johnny Bravo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like and, an Elvis body. Correct. And uh, th there have been people. I remember this particular uh, Arhatic yogi who came to the ashram and and did just cord cutting at that point, just healing. 
and uh, the she actually lost weight <laughs> and she says my pants don't fit me and of course in the ashram there's no way to go buy new pants <laughs> she actually lost that much weight and luckily she had some i think indian clothes and with indian it was ashram food right no uh, <laughs> Those so, sometimes it's got to do with just the emotions uh, that you kind of push into your system because of what you're going through and and there sometimes if it's a, a kind of a, a very severe issue that's occurring maybe with a family member or something and then there's no time to kind of you know release and get healing done and then you just go through it week after week month after month and then after two months when you come back people are like what's wrong with you uh, she luckily had the uh, the fortune uh, she she had she was lucky enough to come to the ashram and fortunately after the cutting of cords there was a big improvement she luckily had indian clothes as well so that kind of was easy because you always have the lovely string that you can either increase or decrease <laughs> according to what you eat and what you consume and in this case uh, when a lot of the emotions emotional stuff came out uh, there was a big change in the physical body as well yeah so uh, susan yes uh, it can be uh, from one uh, that with the one that you are referring to from the lower part of the body it can also happen from the solar plexus and so when you remove from the solar plexus sometimes you know that little punch that you have might just disappear <laughs> all right go ahead uh, since she spoke about all of this you know that uh, it would probably have some mass since it has mass it is subject to gravity okay and uh, when they say yeah. that it, some some are very sensitive to light and some can withstand full daylight what they're trying to say is there are different degrees of ectoplasm so the ones that are not fully materialized or formed would just dissipate with light but the ones that form better would probably not dissipate with light they would probably be visible and would withstand the light so it shows that there's not only one type of ectoplasm if that's what you're there are so many types right there's a whole range of them yeah thank god otherwise can you imagine you and i will be going into a cabinet to do pranic healing no it's very interesting the energy no, cannot it, move it's very interesting they said the word cabinet and they explained the word red light and also all this Yeah. um you know uh i've already explained to you uh when it came to clairvoyance why the uh why the um uh why it should be not so bright in the room remember i spoke about it from the eye point of view now red light is interesting for materialization because it's the lowest frequency light so if you want something from a high vibration to materialize physically the red not only the red light but the red prana is the lowest frequency of the lowest um plane you know so it's just before it becomes physical it becomes reddish all right so that's why it's one of the signs of prosperity because if you want prosperity you want money to materialize in your life come into your life they use red so if you see you know like chinese red so so this why made tao's temples all of that and in kriya shakti those of you do you know what is red for because it's the lowest frequency i don't know if you know that but now you do um that's it yeah you okay so um the substance you have read right yeah so maybe that's how uh, yes yeah, some of you are asking me so maybe that's how you lose 500 to 700 grams after it could be water to... it could be water weight yeah i mean that's unless depends you when you weigh drinking. yourself you have to weigh it at the same time either the morning when you come uh, and the next day morning so you okay. more or less do it around the same time yeah so um if if the lifestyle for both days is more or less the same and and you have lost weight with body sculpting that's what they're trying to do uh, is purely because of this right you remove the ectoplasm out anyway so let's move on uh, the substance has an irresistible tendency towards organization it assumes many forms sometimes in indefinite and non organized but most most frequently organic uh, fingers including nails are perfectly modeled complete hands faces and other shapes may be formed right so with this ectoplasm they are able to notice that it it most uh, most of the time is oriented towards creating a particular form and the forms that are the ones that they they have noticed and they are perfect yeah they use actually the word perfectly modeled is the hand the fingers and the face this is basically what was mentioned earlier and even uh, the baron has similar results with his research mm. the substance emanates from the whole body of the medium so this is something that's been consistent with everyone so uh, there is some substance that comes out of the body of the medium but especially 
from the natural orifices and extremities. Orifices. Yes. And so that is basically the tips of your fingers, your toes, right? And uh, with, re with reference to uh, the breasts as well, especially from the nipple minor chakras. For uh, men the, also? Maybe men. I don't know. Maybe they have some bosoms. I don't know. So, uh, and right. also interestingly, they talk about the mouth. Yeah. So if you look at the last sentence, it says the most usual origin and most easily observed is the mouth. Yeah, that's most the, common. It yeah. looks like they are vomiting it out. Yeah, the inner surface of the cheeks, uh, gums and the roof. So if you look at the green mile, something similar when he does healing for the lady who has cancer, right? Absorbs them and releases through the mouth. So that has been one way of showing that uh, he's been able to draw it out, but then also release it so he doesn't get contaminated. The next is the materialization. The materialized forms have a certain independence, a hand, for example, uh, being able to actually move. So there is a hand and the fingers move enough to come and hold your hand. Can you imagine? I, I don't know if I'm going I to scream. I explained that, right? Let me try that. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether I would scream or just be super impressed by what's happening. But this, can you imagine this miniature hand walks towards, not walks really, moves towards you and the fingers just hold you. I, I don't know how I would respond, but yes. Uh, so this tiny little miniature hand would come and the fingers can, would lock onto your hand. The structures are sometimes Why smaller than miniature? nature. Does it say miniature? Yes, yeah, miniature. Being really Without... miniatures. No, okay. okay. The back, however, uh, so this is what you can yeah. see, but behind there is no real materialization or really not much of form, organic form that's observed. It's just a mass. Remember we were talking about uh, amorphous. So it, there is something there, but it hasn't completely formed, but there is some substance behind. The forms containing a minimum of substance necessary to make them appear real. So what is most important is the part which is probably visible to us. And that's the one that has all the details, right? But if you go behind this, practically nothing. Uh, so that's basically what they're talking. The form may uh, disappear very gradually, fading away, or it could be instantaneous. So what was created there with this uh, emanation that comes, uh, that, would, that which emanates from the uh, medium that comes towards you could form really well at that point, and then suddenly it can also disappear. So that's what they're talking about. During the whole time, it is clear that the forms are in... Uh, physiological and psychical connection with the medium. So remember that everything, the source of everything comes from the medium. And so that is very important to remember. The source continues to be with the medium. The uh, sensation reflex of the structures uh, coalescing with uh, that of the medium. So basically whatever form is there is literally one with the medium. Comes together. Right, comes together uh, and kind of merges to, uh, uh, with the medium. That's a pin. Yes, if it's inserted at this point into the substance, would actually cause pain. So if that hand is there and the finger is coming towards you, remember this is all part of literally the medium. If you try and prick it, it's going to, it's going to cause pain uh, to the medium. All right. And then I'll just... Uh, That's why they get going? nervous. They have nerve issues in the long run. Yeah, but remember we were talking about also yeah, how the nerve about, cell comes yeah. out and energy from that. All right. It seems that the substance can be influenced both by the general direction and the subject matter of the thoughts of the sitters and the people in, in, in and around it. So whatever is the general reason why they're all coming together influences this substance. Yes, the way they think, the way they're feeling and what, what is the purpose for this ga uh, gathering. In addition, the medium usually in the, is in the uh, hypnotic state and therefore is most open to suggestion. So whatever is being said, whatever needs to be done, it is very open. Remember, they are quite vulnerable at this point. When they say influence to suggestion, I'm just giving running commentary because uh, it's very, very straightforward. When they say influence to suggestion, uh, if you remember from the, either the last session or the last or last one, I gave you the example of the twin boys from uh, Bishop Ludbeter when he attended the seance. And the medium, uh, he, he created a strong thought form of two chubby boys with the appearance and all. And, and the medium saw that and gave the whole description and this is the being here. Uh, but actually, she's been influenced. That's, that's pro probably what it means, the influence of situation. They would read the thought forms. 
yeah, we're almost coming to the end. <laughs> now, once we come to the end, then we have to figure out what to do. Okay, pieces of, sorry? Do the next chapter, come yeah. Pieces of materialized <clears throat> forms have been then literally taken. So whatever has materialized, so say for example, that was the hand with the finger running right towards you. They would take a part of it and then put it into a porcelain jar. Now, after the entire experiment is over, when they would open the jar, guess what they find? They actually find tissue, human tissue in it. Yes, and uh, that's basically what they found under the microscope. Two pieces of skin. <laughs> yes, and in another, uh, they took about three or uh, four cc's of that transparent. Remember, we were talking about that whitish liquid or the substance. And uh, they noticed that it, it was liquid uh, without any, any air bubbles. On analyzing it, uh, it, was, it was alkaline. It was an odorless liquid, of course. It was alkaline with a bluish uh, precipitate, yes. And um, if you look at it, the microscope disclosed that it was basically saliva and, uh, and uh, what is detritus? It's a debris. Debris, Waste. okay. So if you look at the saliva, there's only one place you can get saliva. And one of the things that the Baron was talking is the mouth. And so when that energy comes out, so that energy takes with it, interestingly, the, the physical aspect as well. And so when that liquid is placed there, it, they did find under the uh, microscope saliva. The substance evidently originated from the mouth. Yes, that's what I'm going to. On yet another occasion, a bundle of hair, interestingly, not that of the medium, uh, because the medium had darker hair, was found. The hand of the observer being covered with mucus and <laughs> moisture. Don't want to be there. <laughs> if there's mucus, obviously there's going to be moisture, right? Okay. And in addition, fragments of substance that were found was the face powder, uh, parts of the, the, the material of the, the dress that the woman was wearing or the man was wearing. Those were the, the things that were found, right? So when, when they do take parts of this, it's interesting that it's, that's how you know that it's obviously still connected to the medium right because saliva just doesn't go out like that into something else and if, if it has been consistent so this is not the only one they're saying in different cases they got uh, human tissues they've got saliva uh, they've got human hair and they've got um, what you call shreds of the cloth of with the person and including the face powder yeah so which means it's it's come out literally from all over it's not just one part but the major part where it uh, moves and transfers is probably from the lower part of the body. Yep. And so that is the end of chapter 24. Congratulations. <laughs> I think we look more excited. Let's see if there are others who've got their cameras on. Do you look excited? <laughs> Ecto. Yeah, just all smiling, all smiles over there. <laughs> so that's ectoplasm. That's the end of Ghostbusters with us. Yep, we have 15 more minutes. Um, now, no, I sir. honestly. Before that, you let me read, you, know, you didn't ask me to no, read no. the last part. No, you can, you can continue. So, I'm saying I just didn't expect to even come to the end uh, and have time left. So, let's give the last 15 minutes to Amit. No, 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 I'm just going to take it. We start with the conclusion. Let's start it. Uh, <laughs> just, just quickly, because the, what am I going to say about the hair and all this stuff? Uh, you have to bear in mind that the, uh, when you're dealing with this, what Masichua did, I remember him telling us, there are two things. Number one, you have to be very careful. And this, I think Bishop Ledbeater has also said, because sometimes, uh, you remember we spoke about in the previous chapter that sometimes um, the soul leaves the body, it goes into the uh, emotional body of the astral vehicle, right? Now, you remember when you imprint for so long, you leave, there's a mark, there's a, there's a shape, right? And the shape will have exact sort of uh, the qualities of, you know, the hand because you impression, right? That's why it's called impression. Now you also have what you call, obviously you've heard of psychic impression. Now your astral body has been uh, with you for a long time and it has been uh, infused with astral energy. Now when your soul withdraws from the astral body, you, the, you know, your, your soul energy, when your body dies from the physical body, the soul energy withdraws out of the physical body. So what happens when the soul leaves the body? The body will die. The body is the soul is in now the astral body. It is withdrawn after some time. It withdraws from the astral vehicle, and so it has gone into the mental world. But the uh, the vehicle, the astral shell, is still left behind in the inner world. 
and this astral shelf ha has to a certain extent very limited consciousness and basically your characteristics and your uh, emotional state you know because it has been impression for so long are you with me we have explained this already right uh, just to recap now sometimes what happens so it it takes time to disintegrate the shell automatically decomposes but it takes time just like your physical body so in the process an entity elemental or certain beings naughty ones not evil but naughty they might occupy that uh, shell uh, <laughs> For and, some, and, and pretend, pretend to be, be you, you. <laughs> right? So you think you're chatting with your dead grandma in the inner world, but you're talking to a naughty elemental, all right? Now, with this ectoplasm, you can rearrange mat the, the fluidic structure in any way to assume a form. So some naughty matters, they, they say, you know, I'm Parvati, I'm Shiva, I'm this, or I'm the Christ, and you are being chosen uh, as the, you know, the chosen one, and I will give you, the, you are to save humanity. Yeah. I mean, usually they take forms or they become uh, in the shape of Master Choa uh, and tell you, uh, I've come specially only for <laughs> you. you. Uh, those kind of things. <clears throat> Trust me, higher beings don't need to do that. Uh, the higher teachers don't need to take that type of shape and form. So that's it. Uh, before we go into that, let's just end the chapter by just quickly going into the presentation again and just seeing, I think there's one more slide left. Um, so we spoke about all of this and we spoke about this and we spoke about this and the knickers and the carmine and the stuff and yeah so this dr gailey actually i i, I looked into it he's also in uh, bishop ledbeater's book uh, it's really amazing um he gave a lecture okay to members of the psychological institute uh, to discuss his observations, all right? And he actually looked at, he, he had two sittings a week, all right, with a medium for 12 months. And he carefully, uh, he's a physician, and he carefully, uh, he's in this book also, described the teleplasma ectoplasm. Now, there's a lot of points in that whole report that he gave to the, uh, to the College de France. Um, but if you're interested, you can read it, but it's just information. But what was interesting is this. I put it all so that you can read the first part. It's like, a, it's creepy. A crowd of white substance proceeds slowly from the mouth down to Eva's knees, having the thickness of about two fingers, right? Um, this is the most common one that people describe. This band assumes various forms before eyes, right? So it keeps changing because, you know, it's fluidic. So it has gaps, bulges. Sometimes it contracts, folds up, subsequently expanding and stretching out again here and there. Projections issue from the mass. Um, okay, now it actually formed fingers, like they said, elementary outer of the hand. Okay, uh, subsequently it would go back to the mass. But one time, the cord extending into his knees, its end reads. Uh, okay, so in form of not to expand properly. Yeah, so when it became the hand, this physician he actually grabbed the hand because if you know most <laughs> doctors, he'd want to ex he want to examine the hand, right? When he examined the hand. It actually felt like a human hand, all right? And he felt the bones, he felt the fingers, and the nails also, all right? So this hand drawn by became smaller, smaller and vanishes into the uh, end of the probably the amorphous structure, okay? So, and then goes back into the medium's mouth. So that's, that's pretty funny. I mean, I, I found that very interesting that that, that would be scary. I, would, I don't know what that physician was thinking when he grabbed it. He's like, oh, this feels like a, actual person right so um because they're trained in in detecting right so uh, so that's why anyway we can continue with we'll the conclusion all right so to the last chapter we walk yes just a short walk and then we'll end for today all right so going to chapter 25 ah. conclusion considerable as as is the total of not the considerable considerable because it's all in caps eh? no it's, oh no it's not mine is all in caps no it's not <laughs> I'm like, what's, what's going on <laughs> okay considerable as is the total of information at present available regarding man's etheric body and etheric phenomenon in general nevertheless the serious student will at once perceive that the field for future research is vastly greater than the fragments of it which has so far been explored. 
And so they're saying what they've done right now is only a small portion. There's a lot more to be done um, with reference to research. I think Bishop Ledbeater mentions this practically in most of his books. He says, listen, this is all I can do. I would request you to take this research further. Yes. Uh, and he says it has to be done because I've used only this much of my, you know, my understanding to be able to put it in this format for you. But you go beyond. Uh, so I remember one of the books that I was reading was with reference to um, the whole process of a woman getting pregnant. And he says, this is as far as I've taken my studies. But what happens to that same child or that being that comes out of the mother as it starts to evolve, right? When it's the first year of a life on air, the second year, he says no one's really done that much of research. So he, he, he actually urges people to kind of start looking at uh, different aspects and trying to uh, put it down in paper so it becomes easier for people to understand what's actually happening. But I'm not sure if too much has happened in the last hundred years. With a lot has happened because if you a notice the number happened, of healing yes. schools and just in the pranic healing school, the amount of books we have on this, which we have uh, you know, expanded on in this book, uh, there's a lot. Correct. So uh, how much? But is there's the, much more. Of course. Correct. So if you compare uh, medicine and what medicine has done and, and the depth with which it's gone today. But when you look at this aspect, right, the esoteric sciences, it hasn't gone as far. Or if it has gone so far, it probably is still kept secret. <clears throat> but luckily uh, with us, theosophy has been very generous with, with the knowledge. It's been readily available. Actually, it's quite uh, impressive that it's quite uh, cheap as well, the books. Mm. So if you can get your hands on theosophical uh, books, you can get them, especially hopefully with, with the lockdown down in many places, you might be able to uh, connect to the theosophical society if there is one, usually in major cities. Uh, the head office is still in Chennai at a place called Adyar, right? So if you go to Adyar uh, or if you can contact them, maybe if they can courier you the books, it would be a good thing to start looking at reading other books. Uh, if since both of us are not going to be there for, for some time with books right now. All right, so let's move on. In view of the intimate bearing which the structure, nourishment, and health of the etheric body have on the physical health and on the functioning, not only of the physical body, but also the other bodies in their connection with the physical, it is abundantly evident that research into every class of etheric phenomena should lead to discoveries of great scientific interest and benefit import to man. I presume it means important to man. So if, if I, if I think uh, Amit has mentioned this earlier, if uh, medicine uh, would start opening up, not just the way they have to psychology and they realize, yes, there are psychosomatic problems, but when uh, medicine starts to open up their understanding towards medicine with energy, Right? I think the whole system might actually change. And that's what Master Chor talks about in his book. And he says, <clears throat> medicine only has it uh, here. They, they, they talk about the physical. They talk about the emotional and the mental uh, health of a person and how that affects the physical body. He says the next step would be for medicine to understand this energy. Most other systems, most other uh, areas have already started to understand that there is uh, the component of energy. Right? And that's the future of medicine where they will add the component of energy because without energy, just like your, your cell phone will, will not work with, without a battery. Uh, he says that will be a, a different change for medicine. It's just going to go to a completely different uh, level. And so when you start to do more and more research work, which is accepted by uh, not just the medical fraternity, but anybody who's very mental, when they see, yes, there has been experiments and it's been proven this way, uh, then it becomes easier and acceptable because you know just waving your hands like this you look like a magician and you're like how do you do anything to heal someone right but if you have a scientific research backing it makes a big difference uh, to the information yeah because one thing that must show you to uh, what i've heard him say is like we are surrounded by energy today right yeah. like modern technology is based on energy right we are talking right now you can hear me speaking clearly uh, wherever you may be because of the concept of energy, right? Um, your cell phone exists because of energy. Um, you turn on the TV, you're able to see something that's because of energy, all right? You turn on your radio, it's energy. Almost everything is energy, right? But when it comes to health sciences, for some reason, it's only chemicals. 
It's only chemicals. Uh, it's only the form, not the energy, all right? Uh, it's very strange, don't you think so? Like, when you, when you use a computer right now, you're using a computer, you're using energy, right? Um, you use your car, you're using energy, subtle energy. But when you use your body, there's supposed to be no subtle energy. <laughs> It's very strange, right? Don't you think so? Like we're surrounded by technology based on energy, uh, but when it comes to the human body, there's no energy at all. Uh, maybe not true. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so if you if you look at Master Joe's book, uh, The Ancient Science and Art of Pranic Healing or Miracles of Pranic Healing, uh, we, he has reference of many of the other authors, right? So here you have uh, Man, Mind and Universe by Gustav uh, Gustav Wett, Stromberg, yes. And then you have uh, W.J. Kilner's book on the human, human aura. Life. So all these books have already started to indicate more and, and on a deeper level, the difference and at the same time, how we need to add all of this together to make the life of a human being complete and healing them becomes more holistic. Right. So these are all the things that Masato has already started to tell us to, to do. And, and one of the reasons why the research center, both in India and in the U.S., have started to look at doing proper medical research and getting many of these studies into the journals. Because when we are appreciated and uh, kind of getting approval from the scientific community, not necessarily only medical community, it makes a big difference. Yes, our credibility increases. So if there are people out there trying to do work, uh, for example, even right now with the COVID cases, uh, we are trying to see if we can document the healing done for COVID patients. So that kind of backing, that kind of research, whether it's 50 patients or 500 patients or 5,000 patients would still be something that we have um, data on and we can look at it. Yeah. Um, you want to look at some of the questions? Huh? No, no Sorry. questions. No questions? Uh, we have to create balls of energy and put it in bottles by shielding it. Ah, <laughs> uh, medicine for fever. Well, you can create the balls of energy. How will you, the, the, the energy will be, uh, will dissipate after some time. It needs to inhabit a certain structure. More than, I cannot talk about it. I, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. All right. So, so coming Won't back. last. Yeah. So coming back. If you look at Master Cho's book, those of you who are doing the ACPH with us, we're looking at all the modern findings. And a lot of the findings, a lot of the research mentioned here is with, uh, with key or, or... But you can energize, you can energize medication. Why are you not reading the book? What is the conclusion? So a number of methods of conducting such research is open to us. First, we have the method of direct clairvoyant observation at different levels. Uh, so one way is seeing the effect. Um, um, at different levels. When they say at different levels, you have lower clairvoyance, you have medium clairvoyance, you have high clairvoyance. So depending on what vibration of energy you want to see, you use that uh, vehicle to see. Okay, whether you want to see at the grossest level, like dirty energy, or you want to see uh, medium uh, level, like mental energy, other or you want to see the high, high level where you see angels and spirits and all these. I mean, not spirits, but angels and uh, other uh, high, high not only uh, you know materialized soul energy uh, then you use other other centers um, so there are different levels it being probable in view of rapid development of certain sections of the human race at the present time that large numbers of the person will find themselves in not in the not distant future in possession of etheric faculties so right now people can only see with these two eyes and most of the time they don't even see properly <laughs> In, a, in what I mean is they're, they're, they don't, they're not very observant. Like if somebody sees something, you ask them to describe them, they're a little bit sketchy with the details. Have you noticed that with people? When they explain to you, they're not very uh, thorough with the details. They just give you... So that shows that or if you're a pranic killer, you know about the throat chakra. It's to do with details. That is the lower mental body. So a lot of people, the evolutionary state is now still in the solar plexus and heart. So they're either loving you or hating you. <laughs> Love-hate relationships going on around the world, right? I love to hate you. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. But love and hate, right? And it fluctuates. Seesaw, all right? Eventually, this one will win. And then uh, people will become more and more better with details. When you ask them, they'll say, okay, this is, this is, they give you a proper explanation. If you notice, you see, you know how people are evolving based on how they are. So when people are not giving you proper details, proper explanation, they're all over the place, then you know that the throat is not developed. 
forget the other ones, <laughs> right? So as the throat, the agni, and the forehead start to develop, they will start to uh, get etheric faculty. And after etheric faculty, they will eventually go to intuitional faculty. But you cannot build your intuitional faculty without building the, uh, the lower up. faculties. Yeah. So if you look at it uh, in the old days, one of the ways to try and help develop the throat was uh, asking you to draw things exactly the way you see it, whether it was a tree, whether it was a bark, whether That's how the teachers was, trained them. Yeah, so you had to literally remember all the details. And so with that, you, you will then, uh, automatically your eyes are then trained to look at details which most people might miss. And that is something that you want kids to do, you want others to learn as well. And that's why uh, drawing sometimes is still part of the, uh, the educational system for kids, not just to learn how to hand, handle the pencil or work with that. One is yes, to bring out the creative ability, but also in some cases to figure out whether that child can actually work towards the detail. So when you are creating a sculpture, can you make the sculpture look exactly like the person who's seated there? Is your painting looking realistic? I mean, you can have abstract painting. So all those things are also to develop the throat. And that's why with most uh, creative, remember the creativity, this is the high creative center as well. And so through this is poetry, through this is music, through this is the artist's way of expressing through paints or stone or whatever medium they want. It's this, the throat chakra. So that's why the monks, uh, I, I, I think so, I assume, uh, I, what I've heard is the Buddhist monks and these monks, they do mandala paintings yeah. and then they destroy them and everything, but they're very, 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 very detailed. It's an exercise Beautiful. for throat. Not only throat, it's an it's exercise between the throat and the ajna, but more than that, it's a public session, so can't talk about it. But it's basically because you have to see it before you do it, right? It's something so intricate. Not only do you need details, you need coordination between the... Uh, plan and the details and the implementation of the plan in level one arhatic we call this understanding and concretizing meditation or at least actually yeah understand all right shall we end yeah yes okay people <clears throat> we're coming to the end of this week we will see you next week maybe one of the last times i'll be saying that <laughs> but now we'll see you next week all right so let's go let's close our eyes connect onto the palette Feel gratitude, respect, and love to God, to the teachers, to the old great beings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, we thank you for your great, great blessings. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, Sri Lord Maha Guruji Mele. To all the great ones, the great beings of knowledge, wisdom, and light. To the great teachers and masters of theosophy, the angels and beings present here, the angels of communication, our respective Wi-Fi's, to the great teachers of education, especially to the Lord Christ, to our soul and divine self. We thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your love, for your tremendous patience with us. Help us to continue to absorb and assimilate all this knowledge, have a deeper, clearer understanding, to be able to retain this knowledge, assimilate it properly and effectively, so we can become better instruments to do your work here on earth. We humbly offer ourselves as instruments to do your work with thanks and in full faith, so be it. We thank you with gratitude, with deep respect and much love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Arigato Yes, thank you everybody. Um, it's been fun. We have a couple more uh, days, maybe a couple more days before we end this uh, ride with you. It's been, it's been a great uh, ride. It's like a roller coaster for us, but I think we've learned a lot. Yeah, there's no way this would happen if it wasn't for the lockdown. Yeah. There's no way you're going to get two of us here for four months no, that's on Monday, Wednesday impossible. and Friday. Yes. So I think that, uh, that's, that's a boon. Um, that's one of the lessons and the learnings and, and to be happy. Thank you very much. We loved it. It was a pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much. Most welcome. And so we'll see you on Monday uh, for the conclusion. Monday, maybe if maybe necessary, uh, Wednesday. Yeah. But if we finish at the most Wednesday, we'll be done. Yeah. Yes. So, I would suggest the next book you read is First Principles of Theosophy. Yeah, that's one of the, especially for you, Arhatic Men, yogis. Mental body might be, uh, take a break from Arthur Paul. <laughs> uh, you know, right, it's very encyclopedic. Try, yes. Try and so, read. You guys are conducting. You uh, guys are conducting. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> 
last anything book. whatever say we will take whatever author you say <laughs> now this is the last book for this year for us <clears throat> i think we're going to take a break as well however uh, do notice there are a lot of people doing a lot of sessions yeah so use your discernment yeah. and and try and again join sessions which can be beneficial to add on Uh, now don't overdo it because you know it's like going for a buffet in a hotel or a wedding and then you want to try everything you know they having italian food they having north indian food they having chinese they having japanese and you want to try everything great but can you actually digest all of it no no not at all i know you so, have to be mature enough unfortunately to choose you can't you can't have everything correct so so there's a lot there otherwise it's going to be too much information in your head uh remember your basic class if you've done pranic healing there's a lot of information amazing information but a lot so the same thing with all these study sessions so join maybe some nurturing session where it's it's not too heavy but at the same time helpful for you uh, or complimentary nurturing <laughs> session that's uh, complimentary to what you're studying or doing or Correct. learning or what and and also try to have an aim you know yeah, what is goal. your focus what do you want these days to bring to you and then accordingly choose sessions that will assist and further enhance your understanding education your spiritual growth whatever it is you're looking for yeah yes thank you very much it was thank you so much everybody atma namaste and uh, we we'll thank you yes thank you raise your hand yeah yeah uh actually uh, this active class you know it is still um you know running in my head like uh, you know this crawling reptile has you told uh, i want to ask this all that rods which are coming out right from uh, the medium is it uh, he is intending it to flow in a certain direction has he is touching you know he is forming a hand or a face is it with all intention or the rods are different the rods are different from the hands and stuff no right. but then forming like that no with the, the you know the the rods are more just cords that you and I call in pranic healing uh, however that rod is then further used to anchor itself remember either uh, to the earth and then lift for example something heavy like a table or it would just cantilever itself to do something for something that's much lighter so there are different ways in which the rod works the ectoplasm is completely different that we're talking about yeah so there is a substance that is emanating from the medium and that is the one that we are referring to and how that can come together and uh, become solid enough to actually look like the face of a person uh, the hand the right or the left hand of a person like the doctor mentioned with proper literally feeling like it it's a proper hand with skin and bones and muscles and nails everything yeah that and was the question no yeah okay hopefully that you. that helps you virendra everybody thank you again i'm going to end the session for all bon appetit enjoy your weekend and we'll meet you next week yep bye yeah how long will the recording be there to be uh, sorry uh, the recording is only till the 25th of september okay. uh, on the vimeo uh, they are trying to look at another option so it could be placed somewhere else but that might take some time So in the meantime if you want to look at it again you want to put it down in your laptop and listen to it again you can do all those things there's there's no problem we we as such don't have an issue with it yeah um and uh, what else did i want to tell you yes and by the end of the month you'll also have uh new new things that will 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 uh, help maybe family members because a lot of you have said you have family members who are now interested in you know courses and sessions so there would be certain things opening up by the end of the week yeah end of the month for you yeah okay take care all the best show me one one thing show me uh, now we are doing a, a regular uh, ay practice on uh, wednesday thursday friday but in this uh, how can we cope up with our level practice do your level before or after so so what you can do is depending on which level you are uh prepare before okay. for example you have kundalini and now if you're in a level you know what has to be done but the kundalini is something that's that yes yes in foundation for all everybody including prep right so based okay. on that you know how to further work with the kundalini and other meditations yeah so okay. 
easiest is to do the soul because it's the shortest of all the happy meditations and it doesn't take okay. so when you go to kundalini and dhyan then you can accordingly figure out how to add um whatever it is that you want to do with your other level meditations yeah okay because uh, what we uh, we have understood and what we have learned that after uh, after level practice we have to uh, do a kundalini you know okay. to talk about um yes so i think okay that, okay okay i got it yeah <laughs> so, thank you it's been recorded man <laughs> <laughs> stop so, the live stream <laughs> so uh yes i can do that why don't you message us yes so i think one of the things that you I need do to that. remember yeah i'm going to stop the recording as well both yeah.